Welcome, my name is Lisa Langell, and I'll be talking to you about avoiding some common mistakes when administering oral reading with AIMSWEB. First, as you administer the measure, make sure you're using three passages in the fall, the same three passages in the winter, and the same three passages in the spring. These are pre-reserved in the AIMSWEB software and designated specifically for your universal screening or benchmarking process. We have 33 additional probes per grade level for progress monitoring in oral reading. As you begin to test students, there are a few things to be aware of. First, beware of students eavesdropping. If you're assessing a student in a location that's near where other students are sitting and listening, students can easily hear the other student who's reading because that can actually increase their score, especially if they hear words they otherwise wouldn't know how to read. Don't let the student see the test before taking it. You need cold reads on these measures in order to analyze growth properly and also to identify students at risk. Similarly, giving students extra perks like more time or credit for words read in error hurts, not helps the student. In this case, students might perform higher than they otherwise would and as a result not be identified for the proper Tier 2 or Tier 3 services they would otherwise be eligible to receive. During your universal screening, collect your data within a two-week period in the fall, again in the winter, and again in the spring. Extending it beyond a two-week window allows for more growth from one student that was tested to the next and may potentially reduce the benefit of your data. As a trainer and also a user of AIMSWAB in the schools in which I've worked over the years as a school psychologist, I've noticed a few of these common mistakes made during testing. First, I sometimes see people alter the standardized instructions. They may do so with good intent to help the student, allow the student to perform better, or help the student understand the measure better. However, altering the standardized instructions can reduce your ability to interpret the data properly. We want to adhere to the exact standardized directions at all times. This is actually a real benefit for you and your data because all students in your school will be compared under the exact same conditions, allowing you the ability to interpret how well or how poorly students perform on that test and adjust instruction to improve that performance, not the directions to improve performance. Remember, for one minute each measure, it's just simply about testing, not teaching. Don't teach or correct the student except for the three-second rule that we have with AIMSWEB. Again, avoid practice effects. This means not allowing the students to pre-read the materials, use the passages for practice, use them for homework, or use the probes for review after testing. We want to simply use these materials for testing. Let's go over some general scoring considerations for what's correct and not correct in the oral reading measure. If it's correct and pronounced correctly within the context of the passage, you give the student credit. For example, if the student said, yesterday John read his book for an hour, that's considered correct. If it's, yesterday John read his book for an hour, you would mark read incorrect. If students self-correct incorrect words within three seconds, this is also considered correct. For example, if the student said, the dig the dog ran down the road chasing a cat, you would mark the word dog correct, even if previously you had marked it incorrect. In situations where repetitions occur, such as the student says, the dog, the dog, the dog ran down the road chasing a cat, you would still leave the dog marked as correct. If you notice students doing this frequently, this is a great opportunity to jot down a qualitative note about that student's reading for later instructional relevance. If the student inserts a word, such as the dog ran down the long road chasing a cat, long is inserted, but it's not considered an error. That said, when students do this frequently, this may be a pattern you wish to note for qualitative purposes and instructional relevance. If the student has a dialect difference, such as an accent or speech articulation issue, if you hear them commonly in daily conversational speech with that student, it's not likely to be a decoding error when you hear it as they're reading. You're measuring reading skills, not articulation skills. In other cases, if a student has an accent or a dialect present, decoding must still utilize English decoding rules. For example, if you have a student whose native language is Spanish, he or she might pronounce the English word he as hey, which is correct in Spanish, but not for English. So if you're looking for English pronunciation and you're administering and scoring an English measure, he, H-E, would need to be pronounced as he, not hey. 
that would be incorrect. Otherwise, any other dialect difference, accent, or speech articulation issue would not be penalized. If a student mispronounces or substitutes a word with another word, that would be considered incorrect. So if the student said, the dig ran down the road, instead of the dog ran down the road, that would be incorrect. If a student skips a word in a sentence, that would also be marked incorrect. If a student pauses for three seconds or struggles with a word, that would also be marked incorrect. The examiner would provide the word to the student and allow the student to move forward. We don't want to see how long it takes for a student to decode a single word. If it can't be decoded within three seconds, move on. Give the student the word, mark it wrong, and let that student continue to read other words that he or she may know. Whenever a student skips an entire row, count each word in the row as an error. If you're using our online scoring, it will do this for you. You can even check the box to indicate that line was skipped and every word in that line will be marked wrong automatically. The reason that we count every word as an error is because this will impact accuracy rate for a student. Accuracy is highly tied to comprehension. Oral reading has a high correlation with comprehension and accuracy rate is part of that. We report accuracy rate in AIMSWEB, and so if a student skips a line, that will impact that accuracy score. You'll want to look for accuracy scores of 95% or better when you look at your AIMSWEB reports and allow you better opportunities for interpreting and applying that data instructionally. If a passage is so difficult that the student reads fewer than 10 words correctly in one minute, you can discontinue administration of any other passages from that level and simply record that score. Lastly, if there's an interruption and something disrupts testing, such as school bells, dropped passages, inaccurate timing, you know, coughing, sneezing, fire drills, uh, you can discard that passage and administer a replacement passage via paper pencil and choose from the Progress Monitor set of probes. Occasionally, you'll be lucky enough to have students who are excellent readers and who may view RCBM as a speed reading test. In such cases, they might read the passage very fast and without expression and and literally race read. When this occurs, interrupt the student saying, this is not a speed reading test. Begin again and be sure to do your best reading. In that case, it tends to recalibrate that student. After you're finished testing, calculate and report the median score. First, you'll take the total number of words the student read, you'll count the number of errors, and subtract. Then you'll report the total number of words read correctly and the total number of errors. If you're using our online scoring, this system will calculate this for you automatically. After testing, you'll want to use the median for universal screening and benchmarking. What is a median? Well, it's simply throwing out the high and the low scores for the corrects and the high and the low scores of the errors of the three passages you administered and recording that middle score. Medians, when we're only using data sets of three, are more statistically reliable than an average, so you'll never need to average AIMSWEB scores. There's no need for a calculator. If you're using our online scoring, this will do this automatically for you. One other thing, we value qualitative information just as much as we value the quantitative information with AIMSWEB. It's not simply about how many words a student reads. Fluency relates to quality reading, not just quantity reading. So, as you note the student's qualities, perhaps when they get to final E words, they can't decode them. Or you notice that their word attack skills are poor when they come to words they don't know. Or maybe you notice really strong qualities, such as they self-correct errors, or they read with expression. These things are all really important to complement the score that the student gets. Never hesitate to document those things, and you can also document them in the AIMSWAB system. I hope this little tutorial has been helpful for you. I wish you success and your students success. Have a great day.